you know, we just discovered, oh God, I forget, I forget what kind of engine it is, but we discovered how to make this special type of engine. Basically, when a gas ignites, the flame catches up to it and it basically, it slows it down. Let me show you. All right, th here is a video of the rotating detonation engine. There's a brand new type of engine that exists. So we've only really been learning. Uh, we've been doing technological advances basically since the beginning, but really since agriculture, right? Say 10,000 years ago when we could settle in one place. Before that, it was fire. We learned about fire and heating our food to lock the calories in and we could take in those calories later. So we could take down like a mammoth, for example, and we could cook all of its meat into jerky or whatever, and we could eat that meat later as we go. So all we have to do is put a whole bunch of energy in right now, and we're good. We can do whatever we need to do. We can learn, we can grow, whatever. And that's been for about 10,000 years, give or take, since we learned how to farm and things like that. And now we have a rotating detonation engine. This is like the peak, the pinnacle of our technology, our engine technology right now. So let me explain what we're watching. Let's just watch it real quick. It's a, it's a short little video. That's the new rotating detonation engine. Now, let me just talk about how that works real quick. Right here. Check this out. This kind of explains a little bit about, like, efficiency and stuff and how engines work. Anyway, being able to get an improvement of efficiency of a rocket engine would be great when you consider that switching from a open cycle engine to a much more complicated closed cycle engine gets you a 10% improvement, a 25% improvement. It's all about efficiency. It's all about making it so that you use less fuel and you get more output from that fuel. When we leave the planet, we have to take say, I don't know, I just throw a number out there, like 100 tons of fuel with us or whatever. If we can take 50 tons of fuel instead and get the same distance, yeah, that means we can carry more objects, um, we can save time, we can get better propulsion, all kinds of big benefits to it, right? Would be massive. And detonation engines aren't specific to rocket engines or jet engines. The, the US Navy would like to use those to power the turbines on some of their ships. So what is a rotating detonation engine and how does it work? And how can it squeeze more performance out of the same mass of propellant? The important word here is detonation, which refers to a very specific combustion process. Now, when we hear the word detonation, we associate it with explosions, but not all explosions are detonations. In modern scientific terminology, a detonation is a combustion process where the flame front moves faster than the speed of sound in the material that's burning. So here's a fun combustion experiment I did in my kitchen. I evaporated some alcohol in this bottle and then lit the mixture on fire. And in slow motion, you can see the flame front traveling down into the bottle. So the speed of that flame is dependent upon many factors. And it can be- That's pretty cool, right? Made to burn faster by getting the mixture ratio correct. And if things get just right, the flame front can accelerate and start to move faster than the speed of sound in the gas. So you need the correct mixture of oxygen and um, fuel, basically, to get uh, the uh, to get the proper speed, to get the proper amount of whatever. And ANFO is a famous explosive. That's it's found in fertilizer. Some of the stuff that you need to make ANFO is found in like fertilizer, for example. That's why 
anytime people are buying fertilizer, plant fertilizer, everyone starts raising their eyebrows. They get start start getting investigated. Also in cold packs, it's called ammonium nitrate, and it's an oxidizer. It has uh, oxygen locked in, and all you have to do, ANFO stands for ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. So all you have to do is soak ammonium nitrate in diesel fuel and light it, and boom. It acts as an oxidizer by pushing oxygen into the system, forcing it into the system, and ca causing this massive explosion. Info is the most common thing used for blowing up buildings and stuff, to my knowledge today, like detonating buildings, uh, bringing them down, and stuff like that. Demolishing, that's what I'm looking for. I think it's the most common thing used for like demolishing buildings and stuff today. And at this point, the unburned mixture doesn't get pushed out of the way of the incoming flame front, and the flame front becomes a shock wave, where the pressure and temperature rises near instantaneously. This is a detonation wave. So combustion processes with subsonic flame fronts get referred to as deflagration processes, and supersonic shock wave shock based combustion is detonation. Regular jet engines use deflagration, and detonation engines use a detonation. The standout characteristic of the detonation process is that the pressure rise in the shock wave is much, much higher because there's no time for the burning propellants to undergo any thermal expansion. In scientific terms, the combustion is a constant volume process, whereas the combustion in a jet engine is a constant pressure process. So how can the detonation process be exploited to make a better engine? The simplest example of a detonation engine is the pulse detonation engine. And one uh, pulse engines are um, one of the most common things used to or they used on rockets. Or they were for a while. I, I'm not rockets. I mean, pulse engines were used on um, uh, to kind of push things out of the way like uh, the ISS for example I, I think they were used on ISS to push the thing this way or that way or they, they're used on satellites to push things this way or that way yeah I believe I, I don't know that for sure so don't quote me on that but I think the pulse engine is the most common one used in uh, what do you call it you know in space one of these was demonstrated in flight in 2008. This is a simple engine that was a long tube with some inlet valves at one end. First there would be a purge of uh, air and then a fuel air mixture would then be injected and as that expanded to fill the tube you would then hit it with a spark plug which would start the combustion at the base of the tube and initially it would burn as a deflagration but then as it progressed down it became a detonation. And if you did this just right, you could make several pulses per second and get thrust out of it. So this transition was why the engine had to be so long. It actually extended far past the rear of the plane. They looked like big, long drain pipes. So the engines in that test vehicle would pulse 20 times per second, and there were four of them, so they had... Wow, 20, 20 times per second. But it was way more efficient than any other engine at the time, I believe. Like an 80 hertz pulsing. And at this point, I should also mention that there are other pulse jets. The, the V1 missile was powered by a pulsed engine, but it used mechanical slats and it wasn't a detonation. Hell, there's even the U-shaped pulse jets built by uh, Colin Furs, who's also on YouTube, but these are not detonation engines because the combustion isn't supersonic. So in theory, pulse detonation engines can exceed the efficiency of regular jet engines, but the purge and pulse cycle means that it's not generating thrust all the time. So the rotating detonation engine takes this concept and tries... This is the thing that we watched a second ago, the rotating detonation engine, RDE. ...to make the detonation a continuous process. Instead of the detonation wave travelling down a long tube, it's confined to travel around a circular cavity. The propellant mixture is fed in uh, along the tube, and it detonates and is expelled at the other. Therefore, the detonation wave travels around this cavity in a circle as long as the conditions sustain it. That's the theory... But of course, making it work is the trick. And there's been lots of theoretical CFD models showing how waves might work, how they could be tuned and controlled, but the actual physical demonstrations have been elusive. 
it's extremely difficult to accomplish, but it's been accomplished. It's a new type of engine that we have, that human beings have managed to create. The rotating detonation engine. Basically, you want a detonation, which means that the flame goes supersonic, but you want to purge the air at the same time to keep the flame moving. So basically, you're, you're creating like a circular flame. And we have it now. So that's the, uh, that's the rotating detonation engine. And it is, to my knowledge, the most efficient engine that we have uh, to date. So anyway, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Just an interesting little uh, aside there.